Hey y'all and welcome back to the party. It's your girl Brit Reacts and today we are reacting to the gift basket from Gabrielle Inglesias. Let's see what he has to say. I thought it would be great if I could tell an old story that was from years ago that never made it <clears throat> to a one hour special. And uh, the cool part about this story is that it, it now has a different ending. The story is called The Gift Basket. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> People will cheer for anything, honest. Some of you know it, some of you don't know it, but after this, you're never gonna forget it. <laughs> all you have to know about this story is that all the people involved have always been and will continue to be friends. That being said, Martin and I, <laughs> All the good ones start like that. Martin and I <laughs> are scheduled to perform in Northern California. Usually we fly, but this particular day I was having a problem with Southwest Airlines. They wanted me to pay for an extra seat for someone who wasn't traveling with me. <laughs> Take your time. You'll figure it out. <laughs> anyway, I tell Martin, I'm not paying for an extra seat. Let's just drive. It's six hours. <laughs> so we headed north. Three hours into the drive, we're passing through a city called Fresno. And as we're passing, hey, Fresno 559, get us away. Anyway, what? as we're passing through Fresno, we start seeing billboards off the side of the freeway that said, performing this weekend at the Radisson Hotel, directly from BET's Comic View and Showtime at the Apollo, comedian G. Riley. And I look at Martina, I go, oh shoot, G's in town. And Martina goes, yeah, I haven't seen G in years. So we're like, let's stop by the hotel and say hi. So we pull into the parking lot. We walk in. That's I amazing. Martin, he doesn't know we're here. I'm going to crank call his room. He goes, what are you going to say? I said, I'm going to tell him that I'm the front desk and that he just received a gift basket. He goes, what's so funny about a gift basket? I said, I'm going to describe it over the phone. And I'm going to make all the items that are in this imaginary basket become items that stereotypically a black person might like. Oh, God. Are you crazy? I said, I'll tell you what, we got two hours to kill. How about this? How about we go to the supermarket and we make an actual racist gift oh basket? Oh, God. And we'll have it delivered and we'll wait outside to see what happens. I said, are you down? I love the sound effect of the car. And we start to design the sickest practical joke ever. I get a shopping cart and I'm like, all right, we need a basket. So I find one. I take out the grass, the plastic eggs, and the chocolate rabbits. And we start hitting the aisles. First item I grab is a fried chicken about that big. Okay? <laughs> See how quick that laugh was? <laughs> There's a few black people in here like, mother this better be funny. It's hysterical. Let me just finish the story and then you can judge me in the parking lot. So anyway, then Martin hands me a miniature watermelon and I put it oh next God. to the fried chicken. Here's where it gets interesting. Employees of the store find out what we're doing and they start volunteering to help us finish the basket. Half of the employees were black, which made it so much more accurate. <laughs> was stocking a shelf he was an older white guy and we're like sir can you help us what do you need my buddy martin and i are trying to make this messed up racist gift basket for our black friend as a practical joke can you think of something we can put in there without even blinking an eye the guy was like ah, you gotta have kool-aid oh it's at the end of the aisle on the right malt liquors and eggshell all over in the back of the store in the freezer section it's on sale two for one by the Always. time we get to the register all these different employees plus us came up with the basket that had fried chicken watermelon kool-aid grape soda barbecue potato chips sunflower seeds an ebony magazine a chris rock dvd called bigger and blacker magnum condoms newport cigarettes a rack of ribs the recipe for cornbread it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger. Listen, if you didn't notice, if you can't tell, I'm black. And uh, I'm not going to go in on the name of, of all the things in that basket, but sunflower seeds are my jam, okay? And in particular, barbecue sunflower seeds, my jam. Any road trip I'm on, 
If you know me, you know I have to have two things, those barbecue sunflower seeds and Swedish fish, okay? Little known fact about me. So am I saying everything in the basket was accurate? Mind your business. Am I saying I love sunflower seeds, barbecue to be exact? Yes, I am. <laughs> But Kate, we find a greeting card that's on clearance from Halloween, and it has a picture of three ghosts on the cover wearing sheets. Oh my gosh. I tear off the half that says Happy Halloween, and on the back of the card, I write, Welcome to Fresno. Love the Chamber of Commerce. And we stick it to the basket. We made it all nice and pretty, and we haul ass to the hotel. It's my favorite. We pull up. We walk in. The basket is hot as hell, so I'm racing in. I get inside and I put it on the counter as fast as I can, bro. It's too perfect. There's a black girl behind the front desk. As soon as I put the basket down, Explain I hear... Explain yourself. Is that chicken? Let me see. Hold on. What is it? Let me explain. My name is Gabriel. This is Martin. We're a couple of comedians and we're about to play a really crazy practical joke on a friend of ours who's staying here tonight by the name of G. Riley, who's also a comedian. Oh, the one that's on the signs on the freeway. Yeah, the one that's on the signs on the freeway. So as a practical joke, we went to the store and we made this messed up racist gift basket. That's, that's why you can smell fried chicken. <laughs> and she was like, what? <laughs> You need Jesus, that's what you need. <laughs> Kiki, girl, you better hang up that phone. You ain't gonna believe what I'm looking at over here, girl. Listen, we think it would be hysterical if we could have you deliver the basket for us. She lost it. Oh, the hell you didn't. Ooh. I know you didn't just ask me to take that to a black man. You are out your damn mind. Oh, Lord, Lord, give it a strength. To not kill this big ass Mexican over here. Y'all. Y'all. I see you put a pizza in your mouth. I will, I will never say no to pizza. I do eat pizza. I love donuts. I love burgers. I really do eat it. I'm screaming. Uh, I'm screaming. I don't care who you are. I'm not doing it. Hell no. I'll give you 50 bucks. Where that mother <laughs> I know that's <laughs> Oh man, okay. All right, gather yourself. Her to the hotel room. She knocks on the door. Martin and I hide by the elevator on the floor. She knocks. <clears throat> she opens the door, sees a beautiful black woman standing there with a gift basket. This is for you, baby. He says thank you, closes the door. <clears throat> She walks away and she sees us on the ground hiding, right? And she's like, y'all still going to hell. <laughs> we get up and we walk over to the door and we put our ear. Listen, shh, listen. This is what we hear inside. <laughs> Woo! Chicken! <laughs> oh, Kool-Aid! <laughs> He's getting excited over every single item. He's pulling out of the mask. <laughs> No, love the chamber of commerce. Hell yeah. Then we feel him flipping the card over because his voice changed. He's like, oh yeah, man, is it what the f <laughs> outside the door we heard racist bastards? When we heard racist bastards, we lost it. <laughs> he was keeping his freaking out. <laughs> coming out we can't take it anymore we knock on the door he yells who is it too easy chamber of commerce oh no no he the door i put my finger on the people so we can't see who it is right the knob starts to jiggle then the door explodes open and he's like what and he sees us and he's like ah! <laughs> what's up g man don't give a brother a heart attack did you like your basket, man? That was messed up. Did you like it, man? I love all that shit. <laughs> and now, ladies and 
gentlemen a story that has been seven years in the making. Where is this going? I would like for you to now hear, for the first time ever, the other side of that story. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I flew him here to Hawaii so that he can share this with you. Give it up for my friend, no way. Mr. G. This is so cool. I don't know who G. Riley is, so this is also an introduction to him. Um, I'm stoked to hear his side of this. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest, I didn't know it was racist. I thought it was lunch. <laughs> Mexican guy do that to you, man. That was messed up. I know you got him back. I said, what, buy him lunch? I can't afford to buy that man lunch. If I, if I buy him lunch, he'll be getting me again. But you gotta understand, it was a perfect set of circumstances when it happened. Because I'm laying across the bed in the hotel. I ain't never been to Fresno before. And I wanted something to eat, and I didn't know where to go eat. So I'm laying across the bed, and I'm saying to myself, where can I go eat? I wish I had some food. And all of a sudden, magically, there's a knock on the door. And a black girl shows up with a gift basket. And I took the gift basket, and I said, they know how to treat their comedians up here in Fresno. <laughs> and I'm walking to the bed, and I can feel the heat, and I can smell the chicken from the gift basket. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. So nobody smells chicken and thinks of racism. <laughs> I see the watermelon. I'm like, oh, this is cool. They know how to treat a comedian up in here. <laughs> I get to the card and I look at the card and I go, what the f is going on? I said, oh my God, I'm working for the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> washing my hands. While I'm in the bathroom washing my hands, I hear a commotion in the other room. 
right? I go back in the other room. They're going through the gift basket. The maid is leaving with the watermelon. Martina's drinking my 40. <laughs> That was good old comedy. That was so funny. That was so funny. That was so funny. Like I had to, I had to always keep something close because I never know what's coming. And I'm like, I can't, I, my, my concealer, my concealer. All right, y'all, go have the day you deserve. Peace.